Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. And we begin tonight with the increased threat of severe weather with a possibility of tornadoes across the state tomorrow. It's a crucial next several hours is what happens in the morning. We'll set the stage for the rest of the day. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams off the top tonight tracking the latest forecast. Uh, here's the updated timetable on what we can expect. Kim. Well, the more showers and storms we get in the morning that are non severe, the better chance we have that the storms in the afternoon will not be quite as strong. But at this point, we are still under an enhanced threat for severe weather, which means that we have the possibility of large hail and also damaging tornadoes. And you can see the scale here. Enhanced is the third highest on the threat level and it's rare that we see this level not only this time of year but really at all here in southeast lower Michigan. So this would be a very rare event for us. I want to go over briefly though the Fujita scale. This is the enhanced Fujita scale tomorrow with that enhanced threat means that we could have an EF2 or higher tornado and EF2 is winds of about 111 to 135 miles per hour that causes significant significant damage EF3 obviously even worse than that. So something we are definitely tracking tomorrow. And here's the timeline scattered storms possible in the morning, not expecting severe weather for your morning commute, but we could have some rain, then a brief break during the midday hour and then between one and five o'clock. That's our first wave of severe thunderstorms and then a second wave with the cold front between four and seven PM. The highest threat we're worried about hail golf ball size hail as much as an inch and a half and again that threat for isolated tornadoes. We are going to be live on local 4 plus all afternoon tomorrow as it is a forewarn weather alert day. We'll also be on the forewarn weather app as well as here on local 4 news tomorrow morning and throughout again the afternoon and evening. Devin and Kimberly. And I never thought anything like this could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. Former President Trump speaking publicly for the first time after his arraignment today on 34 criminal charges. Those charges stem from hush money payments to two women toward the end of his 2016 presidential campaign. Former president pleaded not guilty, becoming the first former U.S. president to be charged with a crime. Alice Barr wraps up a historic day. Former President Trump once again holding court at his Mar-a-Lago estate after an historic day in a courtroom in Manhattan. I never thought anything like this could happen in America. The former president and 2024 candidate defiant about the 34 felony counts of falsifying business records leveled against him. This fake case was brought only to interfere with the upcoming 2024 election and it should be dropped immediately. The speech before a cheering crowd, a sharp departure from Mr. Trump's afternoon being fingerprinted and appearing stone faced before a judge pleading not guilty over his alleged role in a scheme involving hush money payments to two women leading up to the 2016 election. Prosecutors laying out, quote, an unlawful plan to identify and suppress negative information that could have undermined his campaign. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. The defendant repeatedly made false statements on New York business records. The Trump legal team calling it political persecution. This man's name was not Donald J. Trump. There is no scenario we'd all be here today. Please understand that based on these charges. Charges dividing America with clashes on display outside the courtroom. The one-time commander-in-chief, now a criminal defendant and a presidential candidate once again in a campaign clouded by legal controversy. Former President Trump's next court appearance is set for December 4th, just two months before the 2024 Republican presidential primary calendar officially kicks off. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News.
Okay, Alice, also breaking news here at home. A call for help by Detroit police answered by the community. Tonight, officers arrest the suspect in the sexual assaults of two women on the city's west side. Mar McDonald live at Detroit police headquarters. The latest sexual assault happened just yesterday, Mar. Devin, that's right, a 64-year-old woman at a bus stop on the northwest side of the city. Late this evening, the chief put out the suspect's name, his picture, and activists say he was taken into custody in Rouge Park. After Detroit's chief put out the plea. I'm here today to announce that we have identified a suspect. Naming Kenneth Davis Jr. a suspect in both the rape of an 80-year-old woman in her own home last week and a 64-year-old woman at a bus stop near Grand River in Ferguson yesterday, police took him into custody tonight. I, I just can't stop thinking about um, they called him with a with a woman in the car and a baby. You know, I wonder what, what was that about? Brent, along with others who are out in the neighborhoods doing advocacy work, have been working the northwest side, asking for help, gleaning info that people may not be willing to share with police. I'm so proud of Detroit. They called, they text, they came up to the, uh, where we were at, uh, uh, camera scene. They showed up to get flyers. They were passing the information. They were sending me information. I got so many uh, calls and texts about this guy. The crimes against these women are grotesque. And while Davis will now go through the court system, Brent says there's more to be done here. I don't want to be any mother. Every elder woman in this community is my mother. You know, so I have a, a profound obligation and commitment and compulsion to want to cover them and protect them. You know, so the question is that we have to ask ourselves as a community of leaders, uh, what do we do now? Back here live, police sources are telling us that there is DNA evidence that links both of these rapes. When I asked the chief about it late today, he demurred, merely saying that his SVU unit has been working incredibly hard to bring some sort of closure here. We're live downtown tonight at Detroit Police Headquarters. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, it's really been something. All right, Mara. New tonight, the state Supreme Court rejects Highland Park's request to appeal unpaid water bills. The decision comes after the city failed to pay millions of dollars as other communities have had to step up. Pamela Osborne has more on the ruling and how the communities are reacting. A representative with the city of Highland Park responded to my request for comments on Tuesday, saying they are aware of that ruling, are exploring all options, but aren't commenting any further. Officials in Macomb County are talking, though. Here's what they have to say. Everybody's willing to help out their neighbors, but to some at some point in time, you got to help yourself out. Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle doesn't call it a victory, but says the Supreme Court ruling, which rejected an appeal from the city of Highland Park over unpaid water and sewer bills, is what's fair. The debt of $24 million includes interest and dates back to 2014, when Highland Park didn't pay its bills to the Great Lakes Water Authority. More than 100 other neighboring communities, including 18 in Macomb, Home County had to help foot the bill. You know, we try to figure out how do we keep those rates reasonable. But when you start realizing that part of your you know, cost that you're paying as a, as a rate payer is for another community that's not paying, that becomes frustrating. Last year, a court ruled Highland Park had to pay. An appeal to that ruling is what was struck down by the Supreme Court Tuesday. Hackle says it's a setback for the city, which is facing a mounting debt. This is a major issue for Highland Park. Uh, they need to allow the state uh, to come and uh, you know, help them resolve, you know, where they're headed. Um, you know, 10,000 people living in the city of Highland Park. Uh, that's not a lot of people that uh, are going to have to figure out how they deal with this $24 million suit right now. Hackle says the city of Highland Park is facing yet another lawsuit over unpaid bills. This one in the tune of about $35 million. That goes back to 2020. Again, the city of Highland Park not commenting any further. In Highland Park, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. All right, Pam. New at 11, all five students injured in the mass shooting at, the Mich at Michigan State are now out of the hospital. MSU police saying tonight the final student was discharged from Sparrow Hospital in Lansing and moved to another facility. Uh, three students, of course, were killed. Five others wounded last February. The gunman fatally shot himself then off campus.
All right, now to an update to a story we brought you last night My at 11. Northville City Council agrees to a hybrid trucks. plan to have downtown traffic open for part of the year. Northville closed downtown traffic during the pandemic, so restaurants and bars could expand outside in the winter. The hybrid plan will open streets to traffic from November through April. April. Then in the, summer, in the warmer months, the area will be pedestrian only.